hello. <laughs> God. Um, so, yeah, I figured why not do this? God, I'm wearing mascara. And my eyes are not having it. Anyways. <laughs> Welcome to my... That music was... <laughs> It, 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 it really was. Um, I've been like testing things out. I'm not really sure about like this scene. Uh, I'm not too happy with it. The chat looks really weird, but I don't really know what to do with it. I've like been sitting tinkering with it for so long. So I just decided to just skip it kind of like just make it like as simple as possible, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah. What else? I was like in the middle of saying something and then I just forgot. Probably not that important. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that song is like a, a lo-fi remix of Jailer's Elegy. Is that how you say it? By Ayuruka, uh on YouTube. And I've been like listening to it on repeat, like the entire day, pretty much. <laughs> it's all I've been listening to. <laughs> Anyways, why don't we just get started, I guess. Hold on. What about now? Can you hear me now? Is it because I had like hidden the mic? <laughs> That's dumb. Yep, okay, that was that. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. At least now we're good. Okay, basically what I said, I was just jamming out to the music. And uh, then I uh, was just saying that I was gonna try and do some voice acting, though I'm not very good at it. So, um, and I get really self-conscious about it. So let's try that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. 
Not like this. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. All right, let's go. Let's go. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, defendant lobby number two. Let's go. <laughs> I'm way too into this, honestly. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hi, Chief. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Sorry if I'm yelling, by the way. <laughs> Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell him I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I, I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her! I can't! I feel like it's still too loud. I'm sorry. If I'm like blowing out your eardrums or something, I'm like... Who? Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away! Hmm... The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. Oh my god, I'm 23 too! Oh, that's great! Oops, wrong button, sorry. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a guy at heart. He's a good guy at heart. He's a guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Yes, let's go. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, your honor. The... Um, defense is ready, your honor. Ahem. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? But, yes. <laughs> like I said, punny names. I yes, your honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, your honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Hands shaking, eyesight fading. No, don't don't be sorry for it. That's like the point. Why did I say sorry in like an in a Canadian accent? I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> the test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. All right, so the defendant, the guy we're defending <laughs> is Phoenix, right? Larry Butts or Mia Fey? That's Larry, obviously. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, your honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? The victim. Whew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times as a hint of going to the to the case report and looking at the autopsy report. No, that's not it. Look at the profiles, that's it. Cindy Stone, that's her name. Cindy Stone, age 22. The victim in this case, a model. She lived in an apartment by herself. Alright. It's... wait. Uh-oh. Stinky. No, no way I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Uh, oh, the victim. Of course I know the victim's name. I um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Well, yeah, she tells me what to do, but I overdid it. We know it's Cindy Stone. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Mia Faye, Cinderblock, or Cindy Stone? <laughs> Cinderblock is so funny, I can't. It's Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what was the cause of death. She died because she was... Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Wait, kidney stone? No! Cinder... Cindy Stone. <laughs> That's her name. I was about to call her Cinderblock. <laughs> her name is Cinderblock. Wait, does that... I don't need this on. I don't know why it keeps turning on. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. Hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yeah. What was the voice I gave him again? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's like... Yes, your honor! Something like that, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Let's just go with that for now. I'm probably gonna change like some of their voices up because god, I'm gonna forget it, first of all. And I'm also gonna get- it's gonna fucking tear on my voice, so I have to like stop at some point. <laughs> As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts this into evidence. Cool. So we have a statue of the thinker and it's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record. Okay, we get it. I will check the court record frequently, yes. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the pr prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything... unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, didn't they all die? 
I wasn't dumb. She just wasn't t taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you, anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by... Dumped. <laughs> In fact, she had completely abandoned you. And was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Yes, she arrived home from Paris on the 30th of July. <laughs> yes, that's July, the day before the murder. Hmm. Indeed. <clears throat> uh, she disappears. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude. No way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> this game isn't fucking real. Oh my god, I love it so much. Daddy's sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Uh, paid? I don't want to see you do the fucking slut shaming over here, alright? Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I, uh, wait and see what happens or stop him from answering? I must stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. No, oh, uh. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog! I'm gonna die, I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, when I meet her in the afterlife? I'm going to get to the bottom of this! <clears throat> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What do I do? I'll send him a signal. Lie like a dog. Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, um, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. How is my face cam, by the way? Is it like too small or something? I, I really, I'm, I'm really not sure. <laughs> order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawitz to the stand. Sawit. I don't know how to pronounce like half of these names. <laughs> Mr. Sawit. You sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. How, on like a scale of one to, yeah, one to ten. 
one through ten something I, ca I can't even english right now how bad are my <laughs> voices <laughs> how awful are my voice acting skills They are 8 out of 10. Oh, you're, you're sweet. You're very sweet. Oh my god. Hold on, wait. I gotta... I gotta message a, a certain... A certain wannabe viking. By the name of Charlie. Anyways. Mm -hmm. I already forgot the voice I gave him. I've given him like two already. <laughs> I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I saw. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange. Strange? Strange. I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right there. Hmm... Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor... I have a record of the blackout for your per per perusal? <laughs> Something. I don't know. Some of these words, man. Alright. Electricity to Miss Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. That means that what he says does add up. He said that the time... Uh, that, it, blah, 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 blah. that the time when he called the police was 1 p.m. That means that it was... Indeed, during the blackout, and that lines up. No. Mr. Wright. Yes, uh... Yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. <laughs> Sir. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you've exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Alright. Dude, you're a lawyer, right? Yes. <laughs> He's a great lawyer, I don't understand what you mean, alright. So this is just the same thing that uh, that he said earlier. So we have to go through this testimony and like see if what he says adds up with what we currently have in our uh, evidence in our court record. So we have Cindy's autopsy report with the time of death. And the cause of death. We have the statue. We have a passport. Apparently arrived home from Paris the day before the murder. And then the blackout record. 
which we already know adds up with what he said. So we have going door to door, selling subscriptions. Saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. When I saw her lying there, a woman not moving, dead, I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. It wasn't because of the blackout, yes. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember that time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Now, this adds up with the blackout record, but it does not add up with the autopsy report because she died between 4 and 5 p.m. Which would not line up with his 1 p.m. when he says he he witnessed the the murder or at least he, he witnessed her being dead but she wasn't dead yet so then we present that with an objection you found the body at 1 p.m. you're sure yes it was 1 p.m. for certain frankly I find that hard to believe your statement directly contradicts the, the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour, three, three hour gap? <laughs> oh, that, oh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawitz, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, um, well, I, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? And then we have a new testimony. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape pro pro program. I can't speak. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on the tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Wright, you know what to do. I've got this one. So... Obviously, I've played this game like twice three times something like that i'm not sure <laughs> i don't know how many times i've played it i believe i feel like i've played the first game many times for some reason i don't know uh anyways so he mentioned the television right it was probably coming from the television but that's not possible we already established that there was a blackout Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Mm. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Ah! I, well, uh. lies. The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawitz? No, I, uh, I find it quite puzzling myself, quite. Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sawitz, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. Th that and you seem rather distraught. M my apologies, your honor. It, uh... It must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawitz. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Uh, 
Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. The murder weapon is the clock. But it's a statue. <laughs> Alright. Table clock. The murder weapon. Uh, let me just try to press it first. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. Alright, cool. It has to be... Yeah, objection! Wait just a moment! The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Well... You, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawitz. Hey, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. A lawyer. Yes, he is a good lawyer. <clears throat> your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. So this is your fault, then. God, love that. I see. So, the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his, with his testimony now? I mean, Payne just said that he submitted it as a statue because it didn't look like a clock. So, how would he be able to, like, realize it actually is a clock? <laughs> Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet... The witness testified that he never entered the, the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in... Bleh. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with a clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. Nightbot, can you please... <laughs> Hold on, let me fix that real quick. I wasn't aware that Nightbot did that. Let me fix that. Uh, 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 uh. Cool, it won't load. Load that for me. Okay, let me try if, if I go... Uh... Okay, there, that works. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> I find it kind of funny how Nightball just went, Nope! You don't fucking scream in my face! <laughs> alright, where do I fix that? I have no fucking clue. That's not it. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, excess caps. No one can go off.
Yes, it did it because of the caps lock, pretty much. Stop spamming caps. <laughs> I think I should have turned it off now, but I wouldn't, like, put on it. <laughs> also, X is emotes. And links and symbols. Okay, what did, what you, what you're trying to say? <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was the sound you heard. Nah, it's fine. Okay, cool. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture! Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... 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 I, I never... Look, I... The clock... I heard... No, I mean, I saw... Saw! <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you, I saw him! He, he killed her! And he should burn! Burn! Give him death! <laughs> I'm really going all out for this. Order! Order in the court, I say! <clears throat> Your Honor. <clears throat> a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Y Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sight heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here on this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. I don't know, I'm not happy with the judge. I've always like, imagined him in a different way. I don't know why I went for this voice for him. <laughs> well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. All right, hold on. Nightbot, you're kind of spamming. <laughs> Let me uh, fix the timer thing. Where the hell is that? Here it is. Interval, it can go like every... 15 is probably fine if there are like several lines. It can be like 10 lines, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All you can think of is Liam Payne. What's his name again? Uh, his name is Winston, I believe. Winston Payne. Yeah, Winston Payne. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! Ha <laughs> ha! You forgot one thing! Uh-oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it, I was so close. Uh, Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. 
Yes, your honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Witness? Witness. <laughs> Unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank saw it. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Oh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can, can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Why would it be three hours slow? I like how I'm like sitting here like, hmm, I wonder why is it three hours slow? As if I haven't played this game like twice before. But I also kind of want to like uh, include chat in this. I don't know, I think it would just be kind of fun. So uh, what do you think, Bingy? Yeah, the witness said 1 p.m., but, but she died probably like around 4 to 5 p.m. So there is a th three hour discrepancy there. But why? Why is the clock three hours slow? Why does it have that time discrepancy? Oh, if we look through our evidence again, we have the autopsy report, which just states time of death and cause of death, which we all know is between 4 and 5 p.m. And it was blunt force trauma. And then we have the statue, which we know now is a clock. <laughs> and then we have a passport. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris the day before the murder. I'm gonna answer a yes on this. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha, tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. All right, what, what, are, we, what are we thinking? <laughs> we have to present one of these. You know, he for sure heard 1 p.m. We just need to, like... Time of death, that doesn't prove why it... Uh... Oh, keyboards. 
Yeah, the autopsy report doesn't explain why it was running slow. We need to prove that it was running slow on the day of the crime. Because it, it's running slow now, but did it do it at the time? That's what we need to figure out. Why would a clock be running slow? You gotta think out of the box, like Mia said. Paris. Now you're onto something. The passport. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw It? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Mm. Alright. Yes! Order! O order, I say! Ooh, get him! Fleur, is that how you say your name? I'm not quite sure. I hope I said it. It was like... I don't know. <laughs> yeah! Ooh, yeah! I really, I really have a thing of pronouncing names correctly, huh? Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, um... He was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. I think I lost Mr. Payne's voice. Oh well, it's fine. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant... Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty, let's go, yes. <laughs> and with that, this court is adjourned. The butts are free. <laughs> it turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawitz let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawitz grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. I <sighs> still can't believe we won! Right! Good job in there. Congratulations! Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. 
You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a, such a satisfying note. I'm sorry, I cannot think. Ugh. I've never seen the chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait. No. I mean, bad. 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 Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wind is gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Can we not do this thing, please? <laughs> no. I don't... I don't really know. <laughs> Congratulations, Harry. H Harry? Yes, you! I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> um... Thanks, I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you out of the hook. Oh hey, here, take this, it's a present. A present for me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that? Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really? You... you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And... and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> Larry. Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh yeah, right! What the heck is she talking about? He really goes full 360 with that lady. He goes full 360 with everyone. Huh, <laughs> <sighs> okay. So... Uh, Nest Little Nerd, aka Bangy, has never played this game before. So, uh, as I've played this game, like, two times, I believe. Uh, I want to, like, try to include... The chat a bit in like the choices so uh, what could she be talking about what proves that Cindy actually did appreciate Larry in her own way I guess because she still was seeing other men which I mean she kept the statue exactly check this out Larry proof positive you weren't just some chump to her Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. Yeah, I know, I'm just gonna fucking grab a clock with me when I go overseas. Who does that? <laughs> you think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Get that too. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. How many buckets does Larry need on a casual day? For his tears. Ah, uh, yeah, I figured it was something about that. I was like so confused. I was like, huh? <laughs> yes. He's a crybaby. 
And the amount of napkins he uses. <laughs> People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? The carousel industry probably, but buys all the napkins sounds fishy to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me. Uh. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. Alright, that's the first case. It only took me an hour. <laughs> Well, not quite an hour, but... Turnabout sisters. Yes. Yes, I would like to save, please. Oh, we have, like, several saves here. I'm still gonna use the same one. Why would I use several ones? <laughs> Hello? This is Maya. Hey, Maya. It's me. Mia! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's your fault. No, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now. You know I'm only teasing. Oh, I should probably also tell you. The clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm, well... There's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. I believe that actually was Mia talking, that they just messed up there for some reason. Okay. Can you come by the office tonight, say... Nine to pick it up? I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis. But I expect dinner. Something good. Like burgers. I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay. We'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis. See you soon. Yep. I'll be waiting. Conversation recorded. September 5th. 9.27 a.m. September 5th, 8.57 p.m. Faye and Company Law Offices. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? <laughs> you are not cogniferous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I I should have been more careful. <laughs> my dear Miss Fay, I am so very sorry. But I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. 
your eternal silence. Farewell, Miss Faye. Cognifurious? Oh, was that what it said? I can't read. <laughs> Red, white, blue. September 5th, 9.08 p.m. Faye and Cola offices. Uh-oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. Guess that she have left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood? Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Hold on, wait. Uh, I believe I may have... Yeah, I... Just fix something here. Alright, um... Let's just move. I don't believe there's anything to examine. To the office we go. That smell! Blood! <gasps> Sis! Someone's there! Chief? Chief? Chief! How can Phoenix smell blood from the other room? Is he a vampire or something? You got a point. <laughs> Who are you? The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. Chief, I just gotta like, um, point out something here because, uh, I don't know how familiar y'all guys are with like game theory and stuff, but like some years ago, he did a theory on on Ace Attorney, well, he tried anyways, and he was like trying to make out Phoenix to be like this bad guy. And like, he really said um, that Phoenix touched her body, so he must be some kind of creep, but like, you're supposed to do that? Like, you have to like check if she's still alive? Like, that's something you have to do? Why is he? Why is Matt Pat kind of stupid sometimes? There is also another part which I will rag on so much once we get to that point, but it's. it's oh. Chief. Alright, let's examine what we got here. Let's examine her body. Chief. It's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. It's actually a clock. Yeah. <laughs> he did what was required of him. Yeah, exactly. Like, you were supposed to do that. Hmm. There are some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass light. Glass light stand. Blah, why? Glass light stands laying, lying broken in the back of the room. Broken remains of a glass light, glass light stand. Couldn't they have used like an apostrophe or something that would make it so e much easier? Broken beyond all recognition. Nothing else. It seems like a clue here. Hmm. A piece of paper that must have fallen from Mia's hand. What could it be? A word is written in blood on the scrap of paper. Maya. Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from the department store, dated yesterday. A department store receipt with letters written in blood on the back. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right here on that sofa. 
Uh-oh, I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but... Who are you? It's okay, I work here. Maya. Maya Faye. Maya Faye? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there'd be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. So now we're in the investigation phase. And you can choose to either examine the room, move to another location, talk to whoever is in front of you, and present evidence. So let's present this receipt. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. That's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Why would sis write my name? Uh-oh, now I've done it. I'd better hurry up and call the police. Uh, how, how call police? Oh, we can talk. What happened? Mm -hmm. She seems to be in shock. I don't want to disturb her, but I have to know. Um, excuse me. Can you tell me what happened? I came in. The room was dark. And sis... Sis! So she was already dead. So, you're the chief's... Sister. I'm her younger sister. And you were here visiting? This late at night? Yes. She said she wanted me to keep some evidence for her. Evidence? Yes, it, it was that clock. It was the thinker. Um, about the thinker. The th thinker. That was... Oh, sis. <gasps> hmm, probably shouldn't have asked her about the murder weapon. Yeah, probably not. What if we <laughs> show the attorney's badge? I'm sorry, I've never seen that before. Okay, cool. Thank you. This was lying next to the chief. I know. I saw it there too. I thought they might be pieces of the light stand. Hmm. Maybe. Never heard of a glass light stand before. Uh, back to the office? <laughs> Right, I better call the police. Oh, okay. The phone. <laughs> That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. It looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police? Please, come quick! Let's show the woman in shock evidence about her sister's death. You will definitely appreciate that. Of course! <laughs> What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window. Oh, okay. You're staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. There's a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel. A nice, luxurious place. Uh-oh, misunderstandings. Oh, of course. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, the light's in again. Home shards of glass. Seems to be remote. Something over here. Wait. What was it? Oh, okay. Just the cabinets, I guess. Chief's chair. Oh, no, the chair. A simple functional design. Feels pretty good to sit into. Phone receiver, better not use it. All right, cool. Fan cool ledger book. Everything is written in the chief's ultra neat handwriting. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. Okay, move back here maybe? Yes. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze, police! All right, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe? What an odd name. 
We received a report from the building across the way, see? We got a person saying they saw a murder. It must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great. Just great. Maya. Wait, she wouldn't have. Nah. Whoa! Excuse me! <laughs> this word Maya here mean anything to you? Okay, so here we go. So basically, Matt Pat, in his Ace Attorney video, he was like trying to claim that the biggest uh, criminal is Phoenix Wright himself because of this note right here and like how he uh, steals it or something. But I think that the editors like caught on to what bullshit he was viewing and literally showed this in the background as he said his bullshit. <laughs> you know what? I'm just, I'm going to look up that video right now. Oops, sorry. I just hurt my thumb too. Love that for me. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ace uh, Attorney uh, Game Theory. It's so bad. Phoenix wrong. My butt. Ha 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 ha. Hold on. Let me just find the part first. I am trying to look. I believe there are some spoilers in this too, so I gotta be like careful. Ah, here it is. It's that, okay. Oh my God, I can't believe he actually said that. Let me just, um a little something something there we go mm. nope that's not it <laughs> what am I doing I don't know uh here Yeah, we got the mic there and stuff too. All right, so. I hope that worked. I don't know, hold on, wait, let me just double check a little bit. Okay, yeah, it did, it did, it did, it totally worked. Okay, cool. So, we have here. Instead of calling the police immediately. Hold on. Hey, all right, not so fast. At the beginning of episode two, Phoenix arrives at the Fan Company law offices after Hottie McLegal here has been murdered. Instead of calling the police immediately, he collects evidence for himself. Like the note the victim appeared to be writing as she died in a glass that was broken in the struggle. And the fact that he knows that she's still warm implies that he touched her body. Not in a creepy way. I hope. There the is fuck? no indication that Phoenix tells the police about this evidence when they arrive. And it's at this moment that Phoenix Wright goes from being a lawyer who bends the rules to a- <laughs> This word a Maya here mean anything to you? <laughs> the alteration- <laughs> It's so dumb! It's so dumb! Oh my god, I cannot believe it! It's so dumb! It's so dumb! Literally, it's like- is like he's like he went around like gathering evidence <laughs> for himself. He writes it down in his journal, you idiot. <laughs> he 
implies that he touched her. Yeah, he had to, to ensure she was dead. What the fuck? <laughs> he looked around the crime scene of his former coworker. Yeah, exactly. It makes sense. Meanwhile, MatPat is just being stupid. Also that is such a criminal. <laughs> There were two notes. Well, technically there was one. But he just kind of like, like put it down in his journal, I guess. He didn't actually like take the evidence as Matt Pat obviously thinks. No, I'm messing around, <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, 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 of course. She wrote, she wrote two notes. She made two notes, that, that makes sense. Is word Maya here mean anything to you? Um. That... that's my name. What? The victim drew this here note in her own blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Killer? I'm not- Case closed! You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am! What? <laughs> she made copies like a true lawyer! <laughs> Mia's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in- taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6, 9.07 a.m. Detention center, visitor's room. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh! It's you, the lawyer. Good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Sorry, not a chance. You're on your own, girl. <laughs> like, bye. <laughs> Maybe if I joke a bit, she'll cheer up. <laughs> no way, Jose. Just kidding. <laughs> Whoops, that didn't go so well. Bye, girl! <laughs> huh? Maya? Was that a chuckle? What? No! It wasn't very believable, was it? Not really. I'm sorry. I just thought, since you'd made a joke... Please, don't mind me, you're doing just fine. Who's trying to cheer, cheer up who here? I knew it. No one will believe me. What? I always press the wrong button for some reason, I don't know. Even you! When you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no, I never thought. It's okay, I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha, <laughs> so he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three, give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. When I think of the person who did this to Mia... I know. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. A acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. A 
spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. That's what she said. This entire game is, that's what she said, really. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes. Let's see, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right. She said something about that. I remember! Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Uh, her own voice? Yes! I'm pretty sure our conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it! Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. Your cell phone. So you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right. Oh, I just remembered that detective took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. <laughs> the day of the crime just disappeared. All right, cool, fine. So you're an acolyte, a um, medium in training. That's right. The Fay family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fay family? So, Mia was into this stuff too. Of course! She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I, I had no idea. Hmm. Wait! What? So you're a real honest-to-goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yes. In training. Well, can't you contact Mia's spirit then? We can just ask her who killed her. I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm, I thought that would be too easy. Um... Huh? S something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I ever- if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, um, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. I want to represent you though. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think this is the kind of thing you should really do yourself. You're right. Something wrong? Actually, I asked the police to contact him and they tried calling a few times. Nobody could get a hold of him. They couldn't find him? I have no one left to ask. Say, what about your parents? Okay, don't worry. We're gonna call not that dude. <laughs> don't worry, I'll go ask him for you. You will? Thank you so much. I'm just worried what will happen if I can't find him. They told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. Grossberg Law Office is nice. According to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention running an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Not until I have examined some stuff though. Table for clients. An elegant ebony case. And if I'm not mistaken, that lighter is made of solid gold. Even I can tell someone here's got money to burn. That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil paint is so thick, it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. I'm pretty sure the price is nothing to sneeze at either, for that matter. Expensive-looking mahogany about bookshelves filled with expensive-looking books. Hmm, funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. Interesting.
The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there! This is a crime scene, pal! No trespassing! I'm sorry, don't I know you from somewhere? Well, you're that butt guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butt guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right, and you were... Detective Suede Shoes. Um, Suede Shoes, wasn't it? That's me, don't step on my blue suede shoes. Wait, that's a song, pal. My name's Dick Gumshoe. Wait, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here! Y yes, sir. Be right there. Um, <clears throat> you're a lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Who it thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. <laughs> Dick. I, I mean, he works here. <laughs> to be fair, no one really cares though, to be honest. Uh, let's talk about Mia. About Miss Fate. Did you do an autopsy? Hmm. You want to know the results, huh? Don't you look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright. You can see the report, but that's all. Hi, Yam. Thank you. <laughs> alright, so she died at 9 p.m. Single blunt force trauma. Death was instantaneous. All right. Let's talk about Maya. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? The city's put prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth. I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. You know, you you got a point there. How could she die instantly and yet write a note in blood? You got a point. <laughs> Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait. You do know him, don't you? Of course I do. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Oh, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So, Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. Never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. <laughs> With spirit stuff, I guess. Has this guy slept on his desk? Why you ask that? He's a very serious policeman, I'll have you know. Uh, I don't think I can... Uh... wondering, did you see Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh that, I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure, I mean, wait a second pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh oh, he's on to me. Uh, it looks like that as if a note has glued onto his cheek and a pen is behind his ear, I don't know. Oh, I don't think it's a note. I think it's like a band-aid of some kind. And I guess the ear is just like behind there so he can like note things down you know makes more sense <laughs> uh, should I tell him straight or tell him not so straight okay I can't be straight with this guy but what should I tell him something the matter oh no um uh, 
that carrying strap on the cell phone. This? Hmm, it says, the Steel Samurai, warrior of New Old Tokyo. We wouldn't have to do to need a band-aid there. Shaving insurance? Yes, probably. <laughs> yeah, you see that strap is a collector's item. She uh, was worried it might get lost if it went down to the precinct. Uh, that what she said? Um, yes. Okay, pal. I wrote down all the numbers she called anyway. Here you go. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Check the court record to hear the recorded conversation. Okay, I guess I've asked all the questions I need to. You all done, pal? Um, yes. Thank you. I'll be heading out now. He seems clumsy. Oh wait, one more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you'd better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already then? Haha, <laughs> you're trying your lawyerly tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. All right, here is the conversation. What's up? You haven't called in a while, but actually there's something I want you to hold on for me. On to for me. Again, what's it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like the, that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clock work out. Sorry, I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? I'll leave that up to your imagination. See you tonight at nine. My sister should choose September. <laughs> All right, let's go to Gatewater Hotel. Room 303. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi, smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. <laughs> Memo to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's his attorney. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting. I can hardly contain myself. <gasps> oh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. Okay, what we got here? Examining... What's this? There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. Let's take a look. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? No touching! Oh, bad boy! <coughs> <coughs> you really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. Oh my god, I have to stop soon or my fucking voice is gonna go. How exciting, you murder! <laughs> oh, I really wanted to. Okay, I have to stop doing the voices now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. No, not move. I want to talk. I want to talk. Let me talk. What you witnessed. Do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Oh, observe. Incident. You sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. Um, uh, better not encourage her. <laughs> no touching will I remember that. Um, you know, that thing that occur, um, happened the other day, the bad thing? Vocabulary, sure. <laughs> what did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it. Pretty please? Let me see, um, well, dream on. 
If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh boy. Um, could you just... Who exactly are you? Ooh, Mr. Lawyer, are you hitting on me? N no. Hey, I'm just doing my job here. <laughs> you know, you're cute when you blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I blushed this much. Um, <laughs> right. Can you just tell me what it is you do? Are those buttons custom order? Oh, on her shirt, you mean? I don't really know. <laughs> Or what are you talking about? I mean, I would suppose it would be the shirt because those are the only buttons I can see anyways. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> and you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh boy. I was trying to find the heart-shaped buttons. Oh, sound like a nightmare. Oh, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. I see there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? Oh, what amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives, like on television. Oh, no, not me. I'm uh, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage, hmm? Miss May doesn't like notes, little lawyers, hmm. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get anything more out of her. <laughs> So, back to the detention center later? Hey! What is it? Did you meet the lawyer? Sorry, I haven't seen him yet. I see. Hmm, I better go see if I can find this elite lawyer she's talking about. Uh... Hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? Maya's eyes closed. She listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks. The policeman in the back looks like his wife left him three hours ago. <laughs> he is dead inside! <laughs> he really does. Oh my god, you're right. Alright, let's go back to Grossberg. Hmm, seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to come back. Ahem. If that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the throat I've ever heard, I can't do that. My voice, my, my voice, my voice is already going. Aha, so you're the one they say has been looking for me. You should become a voice actor. I'll stop. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm, that badge on your collar. Ah, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Yes, well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. Not busy? Then how come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm, something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, well, sir, actually, it's about Maya. Maya Faye. Ah, oh, yes, Maya Faye. Go on. Hmm, why this strange reaction? Ah, cha, cha I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. W wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? Uh, um... Anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry, end of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? How can you just refuse like that? Please tell me why you won't take the case. Hmm? Uh, <clears throat> well, you see, it's just... I'm busy, you see. But the client is Mia Fey's sister. <clears throat> Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course. I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. 
Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but could you leave now? I have nothing more to dis discuss with you. What's going on here? Look at the painting, though. That's quite a painting. Aha, you noticed. It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jeez. How did you know Mia Fey? She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day, quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. Please leave right now, but first let's discuss the painting and the history of your boss. Yes, of course. I love, like, the... How you can just like ask things in whatever wor order you want so like they can like mention something and you can like talk about like 15 different other things and then be like so about that one thing you mentioned like five conversations ago <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair that's just the way my brain works normally so i vibe with it <sighs> okay cool now i can go back to the detention center and tell Maya that sorry girl you're on your own the joy of having ADHD <laughs> all right back to the the room what what's the room <laughs> I forgot hiya oh you're back did you find the lawyer um well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I really don't think you should use that guy. He didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What really happened? I don't mean he refused to help. Er, I see. I've been abandoned then. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I know it must be hard. No, it, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold- Okay, wait, I've already read this. So then when you arrive at the office, it was right around nine. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Then I found her, my sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. I don't know. So she could still be alive. The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot of spiritual power runs in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in... An incident. There was a man and he... He... He ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer. And she left the mountain. So, you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also... I had to become independent, or I would lose my powers. I feel bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. So, who was this man who um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. 
Wait, they didn't use a spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother, mother, mother to try to con contact the victim. Wow, so what happened? The case was solved. We thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. The police's consolation with the medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But a man found out about it and leaked it, in, leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me? White? That was his name. My sister told me. White. Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? Go home! Let's, <laughs> let's just go home. There's nothing left here for me to do. She'd be better off with the state appointed lawyer. I think I'd better get home now. Goodbye. Wait, can I just end it like this? <laughs> it was a few days later when I found out how the story ended. Oh my god, no, you can literally just end it like that. The result of the trial was in the newspaper. Guilty. I'll probably never meet her again. Did I make the right choice? Will I ever know? Mia, if you can hear me, please tell me. <laughs> Not. I can't let that happen. I'm not leaving here until she takes me as her lawyer. God, fucking thank you. I was like, fuck, I didn't save. Am I gonna have to like replay it so much? <laughs> I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well. No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know, I've been there a long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on, the, on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. <laughs> well, let's fight this one. Get you out of here. Right! Thank you! <sighs> she smiled at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes! And I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? You don't... You don't go snoop in women's drawer. <laughs> Phoenix. What's presumptuous? Can I have like a, a gap in my hair? I don't like that. <laughs> oh, I assume that she had no friends. Okay, well, I guess. <laughs> when you make assumptions before something, yes, I, I was, I was asking like exactly what because I forget. It was when I tried to look into the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Um, uh, back to the hotel, I guess? Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are... Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your, at your service, sir. <laughs> all right. I just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, uh, facilities. If you no need for anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, no. Hey! Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, I almost forgot. Ah, we came back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp Foom. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? 
White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Alright. Let's look at this thing. There's a screwdriver sticking out of the half-open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? A wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? There is definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this. I know it. Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. <clears throat> Wait, I mean... You know what I mean. Oh, bellboy, still there? Uh oh time to scram. I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. I like how you had to, like, add that in court. <laughs> at the end. Yes, let's save. <laughs> September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number one. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an, in an instant. Objection time! <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Oh, wait, no, that was Edward, Edward, sorry. Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. Court accepts the statue as evidence. You're still calling it a statue. So we know that it's a clock from the previous case. Now, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Sir, sir, sir. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Fi Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Sorry, that was very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin. Okay, whatever. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Smack. Okay. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? And my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. 
It worked lots of times. Huh, <laughs> should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. All right, let's go. Huh, as soon as the phone call came in, rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, all right? Immediately arrested Maya Faye. We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. I'm gonna press that. Hold on, just one second. Y yeah If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence you did it, correct? Huh? Did- did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. Well, I guess she is pink. But that's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, uh, hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Ugh. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. I can't hear myself. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my very own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. There, before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence in the first place? Oh, uh, I know. I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Mm, after securing- yeah, it's just the same- no, finally, we're gone. Mm. Oh, we should do that. Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie, detective. It's a game. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess. I haven't heard of many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister. Ah, uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Objection! Okay, cool. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is ir irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order! Order! That didn't go so well. That's right! What he said! That's this whole testimony. Okay. There has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. Mm, I believe it, it, it is as Fleur said earlier. Or wait, who was it? Uh, I believe it was Fleur. Maybe it was Bengi. Someone said it earlier.
Yeah, how could you die instantly and yet write a note in blood? It was Fleur who said that. So yeah, death was instantaneous. Mm. Before she died. Objection! Objection! Detective Gumshoe, there is one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Mia Fey. That's really what you're saying. What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Order. Order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Objection! Objection. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon. But when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? Uh... The day after the murder? It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, your honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. I don't know. I don't... <laughs> I'm like, kind of wanting to make him British, but also not. I don't know. I'm like... He reminds me of Angel from Buffy, so... <laughs> Just do what you feel like, honestly. I feel like I'm all over the place. <laughs> there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright? You look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham. Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks in the pr of the prosecution. No matter, your honor. God, I can't. <laughs> Mr. Wright, say what you will. The evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts this evidence. Alright, may have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Cool. Well done. Their hands are the same size with their heads. Yummy hands! Yes! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> well, Your Honor... The evidence strongly suggests the victim was ad identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Witness, your name, please. Didn't you just say her name was April May? <laughs> April May, at your service. She did not. <laughs> Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Aw, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, 
Where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fei and Co law offices. Mm, that's right, big boy. God, I hate this. <laughs> Please testify to the court about what you saw. Oh, God. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know, and then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman like dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end, that's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Oh my god, shut up, stop. <laughs> hmm. Well, your honor, I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any- Wait, your honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite... firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly ways of, way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay, mm, okay. With long hair being attacked, the one attacking her dodged to one side and ran away. She dodged? Dodged what? Well, the attack! Please, continue your testimony. Okay, cool. But that girl, she caught up to her. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. How did you know it was my client? Huh? Well, I. Gee. First of all, she had a girl's physique, and and secondly, she was she was small. Who else could it be but her? She has a point. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? I'm like scared I'm gonna fucking mess up and have to start all over again. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless. About this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Oh, that's right. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis. Except her, okay? Cool. <laughs> Let a girl wear what she wants to wear, huh? How about it? And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. <laughs> However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? I'm not doing that. What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessarily necessary, darling. Why is my stomach rumbling? I don't understand. I have eaten. I'm not hungry. <laughs> Miss May. The court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. 
Or testimony again if you would. Damn, I almost had her. I did see everything I did. The victim, the woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with a weapon. I saw it. I did. That that clock. Um, that kind of statuey clock. The thinker, I think. Can she? Can she stop? <laughs> well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? <laughs> I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Mm. Ran off to the right. Hold on, wait. Let me look at the floor plans. Okay. Where was she hit? Doesn't say. Cool. Let me press that. Is that right? As in your right? As you looked from the hotel? Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? That depends. Right! It was my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright? Please continue. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. Okay, uh... Probably about the clock. A uh, clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. Yeah, um... Yeah, it's the, it's the clock. But did you see the light thing getting broken? I believe that's like out of view. Like if we look at... Here, you can see it on the floor, sure, but I don't think she would be able to see it, like, from her viewpoint. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you knew this was a clock? Can you stop pressing the wrong button, stupid? <laughs> the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial, trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. The questions are all I have, Your Honor. I feel like I can probably... Turn up sound effects a bit. And as you may recall, I've caught murders with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Phew, that was close. If you stop me there, the trial will be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That's... Because... I heard it? Yes! I heard it say the time! So you've been to the law offices of Fanko. Oops. No! Hey, I didn't say that! Why would I go there? I heard it from hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Fanko, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Phoenix is so aggressive, always hitting the desk. I mean... To be fair... 
feel like it's uh Oh, what what was I? I don't know what word I'm looking for, but I'm looking for a word. <laughs> I feel like that's up. Not necessary, but uh, it helps, you know. I bet he's like really nervous, considering this is like his first trial uh, with no one to help him. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because I couldn't have rung. Because as uh, Mia mentioned in the conversation, uh, the clock isn't talking right now. She had to take the clockworks out to put some papers inside of it. So there is no way it could have rung. <laughs> Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question ran. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly just take a look right now? Oh, see anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the, as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Wait, I might have to grab a... One of these boys. Sorry, it's gonna be a bit noisy for a while. No, I know I don't have to mute, but like, I'm just like. I want to, I guess. My, um. <laughs> there it is.
So sorry about that. Um, I know I didn't have to, but I wanted to. I just didn't feel comfortable, I guess. <laughs> it just felt weird. Anyways, we're, we're, we're back now. I also got my phone charger. So did I could charge my phone. I also accidentally uh, pressed uh, like the, what's it called? The transition button <laughs> while I was doing something else. All right, anyways, Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as, it is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Fat? <clears throat> well, Miss May. <sighs> Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that is true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? <laughs> Impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... The conversation. Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, you have a girly phone. Take that! Yes, indeed. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim of on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? Mm, the good detective better remember his for evolu evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. Just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. That hurt. <laughs> Your Honor, I think this makes it clear. The clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <coughs> well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know what that... Bleh, how did you know that weapon was a clock? <clears throat> well... Well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. <laughs> so, the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections? Is it right? Yes. The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the, ev the witness had not seen the clock before. Made by Larry Butts. Larry made those, yes, exactly. It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? <coughs> a friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. Her constant boob jiggling is uncomfortable. I know, right? Impossible!
acceptable. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Mm. Oh? Excuse is not on sale today? Oh? Oh. <laughs> mm. Okay, but... Ma'am. <laughs> Please. What to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> oh, 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 silly me. Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> I'm scary. Miss May, let me ask, tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, your honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you had heard about it. Ma'am, control your memories! <laughs> The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the word of was a clock. The wiretap. Have a look at this. Oh, uh, that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is, Miss April May. You were tapping the victim, Miss My Miss Mia Fay's phone. <laughs> were you not? God, I'm such a mess. Oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah? I think I can. Simple. What? <laughs> <coughs> Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said uh, on the phone that the weapon was a clock is. Oh, wait. Uh... It's a clock. <laughs> I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Wrong button again. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Shut up. <laughs> Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <clears throat> witness? Answer the question, did you tap her phone? What? They should make a video of a drinking game? Oh... I mean... If you want to make it into a... A drinking game, sure, I'm not... I'm not responsible for <laughs> any casualties. <laughs> no, but uh... Take a shot, 
uh, whenever they <laughs> slam their hands, every time Edgeworth wiggles his finger, every time uh, someone says either objection, take that, or um, there is one last one. Take that. Hold it. That's it. <laughs> Take a shot. Yeah, you'll end up with alcohol poisoning. For sure. Did you tap our phone? Miss May! Shut up! All of you, what gives you the right to talk to me like that? You! You lawyer! Uh, it's no fair! Oh, you ganging up on me like that! Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, oh, oh my god. That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why did you just tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping er uh, irrelevant? <clears throat> She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Huh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course I can, and will. You can't be serious, no way. Way, I say! Way! Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Huh. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee? You know, like normal coffee, but cold? If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee? I think I'm making th think I'm making this up. Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No, they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, come on, think of something. the bellboy. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wire wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However... If you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? I'm pretty sure that tapping the phone of recent murder victim is close enough to further investigation. Apparently not! <laughs> not in Japanifornia. <laughs> if Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Faye. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Accept the condition. Alright, I got nothing to lose. 
except for well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I am happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gate Water Hotel. In business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Right. I'm ready. I hope. He brought the tray, of course he did. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. Alright, four generations, whatever, don't care. Received a call after eight in the evening. On the dot, why on the dot? Nine on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine, the time of the murder. Hmm. This bellboy wouldn't have any reason to lie, but I have to find something to use in his testimony. One more time, I'll press him until he spills the beans out of his tea. Huh. Huh, okay, I just have to press him, I guess. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? I checked Miss May in, in personally, sir. Not only did I see her in all her stunning radiance, but I also heard her voice. And then I saw them, and I... <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the point being, I remember her quite well, sir. <laughs> Those cookies look delicious. <laughs> yes, what then? She asked for an iced coffee to be brought. Okay, I already did that. Precisely nine, then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir, 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, teehee, I like, like, iced coffee at exactly nine. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? It doesn't even mention when she died. <laughs> Hmm, okay. The cookies do look delicious, though. You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir, it's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, sir, she, the guest, sir, favored me with, um, an embrasser, sir. What the hell is that? Do I want to know? Embrasser? Oh, is that French for embrace? Oh, right, I see. It's French for kiss, sir, but not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Jesus Christ, can we not? <laughs> oh, why would she have done that? I believe, perhaps, she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. 
Sorry, but I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna check the VOD tomorrow to see how the case ends. Okay, cool. No worries. <laughs> Bye, Yan. Good night. <sighs> Sounds pretty fishy to me. Them. Yeah, he said them, but didn't he just like refer to, you know? <laughs> I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is, is that it? Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. No. If you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest. Wait! Please wait! Y yes Does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Objection. Shut up. Your Honor, I must object. This... Show out of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. Okay. This is really it. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? What do I choose? Tell me about check-in. Tell me about when you checked in Miss May. Oh. All right, very well, sir. My first thought was that she was a beautiful, beautiful person. She's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment, really. I see. Excuse me? What exactly was a disappointment? Well, I am not without charm, sir, but even I'd have little chance with her lover there. What did he say? What did you say? Uh, oh, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Oh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you, uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're s normally supposed to mention. Ah, yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof. You fool. Done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Y yes, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room. That's right, sir. Hmm. Headshot. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple. It was... The man with Miss April May? The man who checked in with Miss May. Oof. Your Honor. As has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. My... What a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? 
After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough! The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <gasps> yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Fey. That rhymed. Court is adjourned. Thank God. I'm still not done with the case. I want to finish the case. It's gonna like be my goal to like finish one case per stream. Mr. Wright! You were amazing in there! R really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. Wouldn't it be amazing if real life court was this spicy? <laughs> Sad, but amazing. True. Also because it's set in like Japan, Japanifornia, which is like this like mesh of Japan and California, obviously. Uh, the laws also like kind of like inter interconnect, I guess you could say. So uh, certain things don't really make any sense. I'm trying to change the, <laughs> the, the color of my thing here. But I'm kind of struggling. I don't remember how to do it. It's one of these buttons. Whatever. Oh, I found it. I wanted to make it blue. <laughs> That's all. It sends shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it! What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. This... Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you. I ask for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one pa part, part, part that hasn't been stricken from the record. The victim dodged an attack, then ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. That is the part that we didn't really touch on. I don't know how much good this will do. Okay, whatever. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. Day two investigation. I don't remember how many parts this has. September 7th, 3.11 p.m. The detention center. Well, hello! I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dank place as this. It's really quite moving. Not, you stinking lawyer! I hope you die! Have you come to laugh? Yes, laugh at the fallen Miss May! 
No, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there is nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Here we go again. Poor cop in the background. <laughs> Please, you're scaring the security guard. Yes. <laughs> oh, her eyes twitching. I didn't see that until now. Okay. So, what is it you wish to ask from asking me then? Hmm? For starters, how did you get to be so totally whacked? <laughs> About the man who stayed with you in your hotel room. Can you tell me about him? Where is he? Come on. No way, Jose. Hmm, maybe if I had something to get her to talk. Why did you place a wiretap on Mia's phone? Aw, when you say it like that, it sounds so cold, so criminal. Um, tapping people's phones is a crime, Miss May. Oh, and I suppose you learned that in lawyer school, huh? Creep. This woman is impossible to talk to. Say, why are you so angry? I mean, you don't look like a bad person. Oh, that does it, bottom feeding scum sucking lawyer. The bottom? I can't tell. Does she have a thing against lawyers or just against me? Yeah, like, there's nothing here I can show her, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Looks like Forensics is taking the day off today. Detective Gumshoe is nowhere in sight. The police really gave this place a working over. I doubt there are any valuable clues left. I suppose it can't hurt to take a look around though. Mia's desk, perfectly clean, as always. The only thing it's missing is Mia. An old movie poster. Apparently, this was the first movie that made Mia cry when she saw it. I'll have to check it out one of these days. The sky is blue, and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. Cool, I don't think there is anything here for me. Pronounced bottom by psycho lady. <laughs> mm, yes, quite. Hey, that's weird. Huh, looks like Grossberg is out today. Again. Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason. Wait a second. Wasn't there a giant painting hanging on, on that wall? Yeah, yeah, it was a painting of... It was one guy, right? <laughs> Wasn't it? It wasn't a very memorable painting. I know there was like one man at the very least. There were some flowers too? <laughs> I don't know. No, I'm not sure. Okay, move to get water hotel. Because why not? Ah, oh, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I dare say so myself. Oh, well, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, 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 not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the gate waters rep, as they say. Huh? Rep? Yes, our reputation will swell as the hotel where the murderer used a wire tap. We can charge a premium for the room, of course. It will be great for business, sir. Whoa, whoa, Miss May hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, you are our honored guest. Please let me know if there is anything I can bring you. A different way of thinking, yeah, for sure. About Miss May. Oh, her, sir? Not to boast, but I knew the moment I saw her. She'd do it, I said. Do what? I'm starting to think the most suspicious person here is this guy. This guy, sorry, I can't. Intonation, whomst? I wanted to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. Ah, oh, yes. He struck me as a real lady killer, if you'll pardon the expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him, sir. 
He and I are of the same ilk. We both carry the scent of danger. There we are in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. A photo? Hmm. Could you tell me about this hotel? Absolutely, and on that subject, I have an excellent idea, sir. Currently, this hotel is known as The Gatewater. I propose that we add a subtitle. A subtitle? The Gatewater Hotel Murder Manor. Well, what do you think? Um, sounds great, whatever floats your tea set. There isn't really anything here I can... Give him, right? I don't believe he will let me snoop around here. Maybe. A bottle and two glasses rest on the table. Why hasn't he cleaned this up by now? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. But if you could please refrain from touching those. It's part of the decor. I call it the last drink before murder. We'll be famous. The talk of the hotel industry. Okay, what about the... Just common thing about the weather. Nice. Love that. Nice weather again today. I can see the Fay and Co. law offices, of course. Ah, yes. We plan to install a telescope in that window, of course. Just five dollars will earn you a th earn you three minutes of a view to a kill. Just kidding, sir. <laughs> By that look in his eyes, I'd say it was more than serious. A vase, as expected. I'm not good with flower names, except maybe tulips and some flowers. <laughs> Things people would do for money. For real. Back to the detention center. You again? Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now? You don't just have a spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart. That does it. When this case is done, I'm shaving my head. Please don't. <laughs> about the man. Can you tell me more about him? Not telling. Would you have sold out the late Miss Faye to the cops? No. See? Damn. Hmm. Maybe if I had something to get her to talk. Do I have anything to get her to talk? Guess what? Actually, I am really hate your guts. So get lost because, well, I'm not cooperating. Thanks, I noticed. Okay, cool. She won't talk to me no matter what I do. Let's go back to Grossberg, I guess. Grossberg is nowhere to be seen. Oh, wait, I didn't see this. What's this? Old photos? There are two lying here. Something's been written in pencil on the backs. DL6 incident, exhibit A. DL6 incident, exhibit B. Let's take a look at these. Exhibit A. I'm sure I've seen this person somewhere. Perhaps I'll borrow this photo. I'm sure no one will miss just one little photo. And it might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. A photo lies on the desk. Maybe I should switch it with the one I took. Yeah, let's switch it. The bellboy did want a photo. So I should probably take the one with the man. <laughs> take a look at this photo. Look at this photograph! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's him, detective. Um, I'm the lawyer? Oh, I know that. I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. No, no I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about a write an affidavit? Affidavit? It was an affidavit, right? It's one or the other, I don't know. Swearing that that's him. An affidavit? This guy is way too excited about this. Sure, write it if you want. Well, sure, why not? Yes! I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. From henceforth, I will be known as the bellboy who swore the affidavit. Just hurry up and write it. 
Not even Miss May can play dumb to this. He is way too excited about a murder. He's just excited to be involved in something, you know. I'm not sitting comfortably. I don't know how to sit in chairs. He has seen too many crime shows. Oh, for sure. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> that was the chair, by the way. That was not my leg or anything. <laughs> All right, let's give you that affidavit. Could you have a look at this? What's that? The bellboy's affidavit. It tells us everything he saw. Such as the man you checked in with. Who was most definitely this guy. I was concerned for a moment. <laughs> no need to worry. I'm just using the other chair. You can't even see it. Nope, can't see it. Okay, cool, love that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't see that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, final talk. You, you win lawyer. Yes. Man, that felt good. It's great to be alive. Why are you pumping your fists in the air? <clears throat> now, tell me about the man you were with. That man? He's my boss. Red White. The president of the information gathering conglomerate, Blue Corp. Red. White. Information gathering? Well, I suppose you could call it a detective agency. Hmm. So this is the man that was with you the night of the murder. I'm, I'm scared to talk. I don't want to end up like her. It's okay, I'll just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Mr. Red White. At last. Finally a lead on this guy. If April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. Time to take action. Bellbong's affidavit discarded. Okay, cool. Thank you, Miss May. September 7, Blue Corp Incorporated. CEO's office. Oh, look at that. It's a painting. It wasn't of a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the hat, to be honest. That's all I remember from it. He's got the painting. What's with the surreal decor? Welcome, please furnish me with the title of your personage. What the? Your name, what's your name? I was just inquirably asking the title that you go by. Oh, right, Phoenix Wright. Mr. Wright, is it? Right, I see. Splendiferous. Perhaps I have intimidated you with my giantesque vocabulary. Uh. When you ate a dictionary and have to show off. Yeah, pretty much. I was like, oh man, this this guy frequents r slash. I am very smart. Unironically. <laughs> what is this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Corp. You know, corporate expansion official. My business dealings bring me into contact with the elite of the elite. So I'm afraid I am not used to conversing with the wordily challenged. What a fruitcake. Isn't that like, um...
a term, like a negative term towards gay people. Or am I making something up? <laughs> I don't know. Hold on, wait. Let me just tilt down this a bit. Yeah. How is that? A bit much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's what I meant. Mm -mm. There we go. Thank you, fruit basket. Yeah. Hmm. Let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. What does he mean by that? No matter. So, what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? Yipes. This guy's arrogance meter is off the scale. Ms. May is an employee of Blue Corp, is she not? Correct. She was my secretariat. Oh no, my voice is like actually going. <laughs> Pretty sure he bleaches his teeth. Te teeth? Teeth? Yeah, probably. What, what a shock it was to hear what she has done. What she has done? You mean the wiretap? Indeed, she is paid to answer phones. Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as part of her duties. But I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. It is ineffable that she would do this. It sounds like he's trying to turn Miss May into a scapegoat. On the night of the murder, were you in April May's hotel room? Who can say? I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, the hotel bellboy has stated on the record that he does remember you very clearly. No matter. The bellboy can, bell, bell boy, bell, bell boy can say what he pleases. I still won't talk to you. If you want me to speak, put me on the witness stand. Although I doubt you'd be capable of doing that. Hmm. He raises a good question, actually. Why didn't the prosecution call him as a witness? He should have seen the same thing as April May. Oh, the police, the courts. To me, they are mere toys, playthings for my amusement. What kind of company is Blue Corp anyway? I like how the statue in the back is holding a, a, a green globe and uh, the text is in red very blue i think this guy might be colorblind or something though to be fair he has color coordinated his outfit except for that tie that tie really does not it does not go well <laughs> just the dots in general really the color isn't the worst but the the, the dots Anyways, oh, excellent question. We buy and sell various kinds of information. We are a company of the future, you might say. We are the future. Sell information? In just 10 years, I've built this business up into the grand office you see now. Ah, in case you were wondering, Blue Corp was named after the color blue. I, Red White of Blue Corp, as founder and CEO, named it so. And why, you ask? Because I like the color blue, of course, but there is nothing blue in your fucking office. What the fuck? <laughs> Fantabulistic, is it not? That painting. Uh, there's something that's been bothering me. Yes? What might that be? That big painting on the wall over there. When did you get it? Say, when did you get that painting? Hmm, no idea. I forgot. I've seen that painting before, yesterday, in fact. Where did I find that painting here today? Mr. Wrong, was it? Right. It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? Um, huh? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend. A mere lawyer. Worth nothing. Silch, Sippo, nada. Just like that sorry excuse for an attorney, Grody Burger. What? 
Uh. Oh no. Oh, he he punched me. Well, Mr. Lawyer, what will you do? Huh? Charge me with assault? Charge away, I welcome it. For it is you who will be found guilty. What? Heed my exposition. The police, the courts, they all do my bidding. So you say, but I wonder. Is that kind of control really possible? I don't expect you to understand. It is a world beyond your compensation. You come here from Grodyburgers, I presume? Mr. Grossbergs, yes. Then you must ask him, why is it that this painting of his hangs here? Perhaps then he will tell you. Perhaps he will explain how a man can live life purely for personal profit. Go now, skedaddle. There's nothing more to discuss. All right, cool. I'll get out of your hair, I guess. Blue Corp named after blue. Yes, very, very creative. Love that. Huh, I don't think he's noticed me standing here. Maybe I should clear my throat. Ahem! Jumping Jehoshaphat's! Oh, you! What's wrong? You looked so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. Hmm? Oh, I'm not senile yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. Something is really bothering him. That much is clear. So, you came to see the trial? Yes, yes I did. Something was bothering me all last night, you see. Couldn't get a wink of sleep. Really? What was that? Well, you see, it's just me, a sister, that poor girl. Hold on, wait. Uh, where did Charlie go? Oh yeah, I also saw that uh, Fleur asked if there was a, a live-action movie of uh, Ace Attorney, and yes, I believe there is. Well, I know there is, actually. But for some reason, I was like thinking musical, but I don't think that's it. <laughs> I think that's something else, but yes, there is a, there is a movie. I've been meaning to watch it, but I never got around to it. Uh. My boy. He's a turn the musical. <laughs> it just makes sense for me. I don't know why, but that would be amazing. I owe you my thanks, truly. I don't know what I would have done if things had gone poorly for the girl. I want it to be real. I asked before, but why did you refuse her request for defense? I think I have a right to know. A right, Mr. Wright? No, no, I'm sorry. It's just, I need more time to think about it, my boy. He does seem troubled about something. I'm starting to have a feeling I know what it is. So, I've paid Blue Corp a visit. Oh? Oh, I see. Mr. Grossberg, I have to admit something has been bothering me. Oh? What is it? Well, out with it, my boy. You see, it's just... Mr. Grossberg, sir. There was a giant painting hanging right here the other day, was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with. Well, I saw it. Today. It was in the CEO's office at Blue Corp. Red White's office. So, you noticed. I suppose I should have guessed you would. It is a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. Connected, you say? Yes, and I know what it is. <laughs> You're lovers! <laughs> I want to answer that. I want to answer that so bad. Should I answer that? The forbidden ship. It's not something I can claim to understand, but you and Mr. White are lovers, aren't you? <laughs> What? But my boy, you sent that painting to him as a sign, a sign of undying love. 
My boy, please, you're letting your your fancies run away with you. Where do you get these bizarre ideas? I, I, I don't understand how you could... That's because I'm not. We're not. Don't be ridiculous. Enough. I'll swallow my pride and tell you all. I know it's... They are lovers. <laughs> Oh, Phoenix ships it. <laughs> Phoenix totally ships it. No, we are not lovers. Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses, I'm afraid. I've been paying them for 15 years now. 15 years? All because of the DL6 incident, as you may have guessed. The name of the back of those photographs. As you, as you suspected, I could not stand in defense of Maya because of this. White would have destroyed me if I did. So that's the connection. It is hard for me to tell you this, my boy. But arresting Red White will be nigh on impossible. Impossible? Why? He has information on everyone. It gives him an iron grip. He owns judges, attorneys, prosecutors, police, and politicians. What? They are bound, unable to do harm to themselves, and therefore, to him. Don't look at me like that. What you see is nothing more than the weight of many years. But why were you blackmailed over this, Mr. Grossberg? The DL6 incident was top secret at the time. It made sense. The police didn't want people to know that they were using a medium. They couldn't let people know. But one person found out. I... I told him. You told White? He offered me riches. It is an embarrassment to me now. Because I talked, the police were mocked far and wide. In secret, they began looking for the one who sold them out. Of course, White heard about it and he came to me. Only this time, the offer was blackmail. I see. White controls the law of this country as he sees fit. Yet a few would still challenge him. Have a close look at Mia's office. Mia's office? She followed his every move for years. She may have recorded something of what she found. What is the DL6 incident? DL6 is nothing more than a, the sorting code the police gave the case. It was 15 years ago now. I received a request from a medium. A spirit medium. A medium. Her name was Misty Faye. Faye! Indeed, she was Mia's mother. She had been investigating a murder at the bequest of the police. And she failed. As a result, the police called her a fraud. This is what Maya was talking about the other day. I did all I could for her, and in the end, cleared her of wrongdoing. That murder case, however, remains unsolved to this day. That case in the DL6 incident... Oh boy, I don't think I have anything here I can show him, right? His lover? <laughs> uh, now where to? It's funny, looking at this room. It seems so normal. Hard to imagine a murder took place here. Mr. Grossbrook said there were clues. Maybe I should have another look. Okay, never mind. Not there. I guess. Favorite potted. <laughs> Mia's favorite potted plant. I guess I'll have to water it now. All the cases the chief ever worked on are filed here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I look at? Um, see if there is A records in this file that catches my eye. Shut up. A, B, F, Misty Fay. That's Mia and Maya's mother. Hmm, should I take a look? Let's read it, sure. I have tarnished the Fay name. 
leaving only these words. My mother vanished. I was determined to find the ones who had made my mother blame herself this in this way. Using the power that runs in my family, I held an audience with the dead. Finally, the names of two men surfaced. One was Marvin Grossberg, a lawyer who sold my mother's information for riches. The other was the man who sold that information to the press. This parasite, who makes his fortune on threats and coercion. His name is... Hmm, the record stops here. So me and new Grossberg. See J through S. Nothing much in here. Maybe I'll just skim through some of this. <clears throat> well, no harm in flipping through a bit, I guess. The biggest part's here. At the end in S. Suicide? Ew. She has a collection of suicide reports. There's politicians, policemen. There's writing on most of these in pencil. Light. This is Mia's handwriting. Wait. I get it. Mia thought he was in involved in these suicides. White drove them all to... You can use these newspaper clippings. Mm, let's find the most disturbing one. <laughs> let's find the most disturbing one. Okay. I want to check the last one. T U I know. W. White. The entire W section is missing. Was it taken? Interesting. I don't really know where to go. Hmm. Bellboy seems to be out. Sound of water coming from the shower. Why is he using the shower in one of the guest's rooms. What? Someone seems to enjoy washing the showers. Oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Here I thought he was just like... <laughs> God, I'm dumb. He'd be weird, for sure. Uh, attention center? Apparently, Miss May is in questioning. Okay, well, that they'll let me talk to her today. Okay, cool. Does the bellboy do everything in a hotel? Yeah, ob obviously, he's the only... Uh... <laughs> looking for words, looking for words. He's the only guy that works there. Like the blue cord? Well, aren't you persistent? Sorry, but there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself. But it seems the message has not yet penetrated your thick skull. Stop bothering me. If you try my patience further, I fear a nasty accident may occur. Do I make myself clear? Transparent. Um. This is the only clue that Mia left me. I better make this one count. Mr. White, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then one day, word got leaked to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. But this concerns me how? I found this article in Mia's office. Miss Mia? She had a file filled with articles like this. Every one of them was labeled with a single word. White. Mr. White, I know what you did to this politician. Blackmailed him. You were blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You were involved in all of the suicide cases that Mia investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What a bizarre accusation. Mr. Wrong. What is it that you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, no, no. I think not. You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia. He's gonna punch us so bad. Secretary's office, hello. Mr. Rog will be leaving now. Yes, sir. I'll send someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. You're wrong, Mr. White. Excuse me? What I should be doing now is going after you. 
Just what are you insinuating? Mia was on to you. She was keeping tabs. For this reason, you had April May tapping her phone. Then, Mia was murdered, and all the documents about you mysteriously disappeared. So, the culprit will be... Even a child could work it out, Mr. White. You did it. Secretary's office. We won't be needing an escort for Mr. Wrong. Instead, please connect me to the public prosecutor's office. Of course, sir. One moment, please. White? That you? What are you doing calling me at a time like this? Hello, Chief Prosecutor. I've changed my mind. I want to testify tomorrow. What's this about? The Mia Fey case. I witnessed the murder, you see. And thus, as a very important witness, I would like to testify. What? Why now? I thought you said you didn't want to go to court. Quietude. I told you I changed my mind, didn't I? Oh, and one other thing. Send the police over here right away. The man is standing right in front of me. He looks dazed, but could be violent. What? What man? Are you even listening? The executioner, the hatchet man, the liquidator, the killer man. What? Mr. White, this isn't another one of those. Chief Prosecutor, I do not believe you are in a position to freely offer your opinions to me, correct? I'm telling you to send the police, now. Did I not tell you, Mr. Wrong? You're a mere lawyer. As was Miss Mia. How dare you? I'll point the finger at you and you will be tried as Miss Mia's killer. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer of any worth will defend you. I have friends in the local lawyers association, you see. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously inept that they make even you look competent. I, I feel faint. Detective Gumshoe reporting, sir. Ah, oh, butts! Harry butts! Right, actually. Phoenix Wright. And my friend's name is Larry. Oh, right. Sorry, pal. Butts was that murderer, right? Detective Gumshoe. I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fey. What? Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. Damn. I can't believe it's only been a day since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Why it's going to set a trap for me. And the prosecution will be in on it, of course. Edgeworth included. An attorney was assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right! Mr. Wright! Oh, Maya. Great, they let you out of detention. Just now, yes, it's all thanks to you. Huh, <laughs> now I'm afraid we switched places. What? You mean, you... Explain what had happened to Maya. I don't believe it. How many people does that man need to destroy before he's satisfied? My mother. My sister. Now you. This has gone too far. Mr. Wright, please tell me, is there anything I can do? Hmm, well... Alright. You can be my defense lawyer tomorrow. Alright! Huh? Leave it to me. I am Mia's sister after all. Lawyership runs in our blood. Wasn't it ghost powers that ran in your blood? I better run to the bookstore and pick up a copy of Law for Rookies. Wait! Wait, wait, wait! What? 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 I'm kidding, it was a joke! No way! No, really, I, I was kidding, but thanks, it's good to know you're on my side. And there really isn't anything you can do for me anyway. But, but I can't just sit here and do nothing! I got to give that man a piece of my mind. Just a piece? Okay. And come to the trial tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'll be there. I'll show them a thing or two. Times may change. Yet with crime, it's the same old story. In fact, it's gotten worse. Lengthy court, pr court proceedings are no longer realistic. 
beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days was put on initial core trials. Hold on, wait, I need to fix my... Uh, this again. Almost all finish in a day, most with a gu guilty verdict. I never thought I would end up in the defendant's chair myself for this case. With a true culprit appearing as the star witness. This is it. Tomorrow it's me or him. Oh God. I hope this is the final part. No, I want to save it. Yes, please. Thank you. It just says day three. Ugh. It sounded like s someone was humming, but I, I think it's just a machine. Or something, I don't know. It just freaked me out. <laughs> September 9th, 9.52 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah. One way or another, this case gets decided today. Oh, Phoenix, look! Prosecutor. Edgeworth. I perceived a call from the chief's prosecutor's office yesterday. I was told that whatever Mr. White says today, it will be the absolute truth, no matter how you try to attack his testimony. If I raise an objection, I have it on good faith that the judge will listen to me. What? Does, does White have the judge in his pocket too? So, you're saying I'm going to be guilty, end of story. I will do anything to get my verdict, Mr. White. Anything. Why? Why? How can you torment an innocent person like this? Innocent? How can we know that? The guilty will always lie to avoid being found out. There's no way to tell who is guilty and who is innocent. All that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty. So I make that my policy. Edgeworth. You've changed. Hmm? Huh? Phoenix, you know him? Don't expect any special treatment, Phoenix writes. Phoenix? Well, court will be starting soon. What? But wait! Your defense attorney isn't even here yet. They're not... I'll be defending myself. What? Okay, let's do this. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, are you sure you're up to doing this? Yes, Your Honor. I will be defending myself. Understood. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. As the details of the event are already quite clear to the court. Today, we will, we will hear the testimony of a witness to the defendant's crime. I see. The prosecution may call its witness. That went far too smoothly. Why didn't the judge ask Edgeworth why his witness didn't testify before? It's like... It's like he already knows why. Hmm, if anyone's going to raise an objection about this, I suppose it's me. Mr. Edgeworth, you owe an explanation to the court. Why didn't this witness testify in the trial against Miss Mia Me Hmm. I'm ever so sorry. Mr. White is a busy man, and besides, at the time I thought that Miss May's opinion was all that would be needed. 
Again, my sincerest apologies to the court. Excellent, Mr. Edgeworth. I appreci appreciate your demeanor. Great. He gets to show off and I get nowhere. I would like to call Mr. Red White to the stand. Please state your full name. You wish to know the title of my personage. Uh, your name? Yes, that is what I said. Oh dear, do my locutions confuse? Name. These two are great together. My name is Red White, but my friends call me Blanco Nino. So was it Nino? Nino? I don't know. Me, me, me trying to say that I know Spanish. I don't fucking know Spanish. <laughs> I am the CEO, or to use a more common term, the president of Blue Corp. Did you know the victim, Miss Mia Fey? That would be a negatory. No, I did not. You were at the Gatewater Hotel the night of the murder. Correct. And you witnessed the murder from there. Ahem. <laughs> Why... Tell you what you why tell you what you already know. Very well, Mr. White. You may begin your testimony. If I can't rip this guy's testimony apart, I'm done for. Why do you always feel like it's the end of the world and I'm the last man standing? <laughs> I hope you have made your peace with God, Mr. Lawyer. Let him have it, Phoenix. Let's see. It was about nine, I believe. I was quietly perusifying, uh, that's reading to you, some papers by the window. Then I heard a bedlam coming from outside. Surprised, I turned to look at the building across the way. It was then I saw him, a spiky-haired man attacking a woman with long hair. Needless to say, that man was none other than you, Mr. Lawyer. I called Miss May over at once. She, too, was flabbergasted, of course. And said she saw a, a, a female shape, didn't she? Didn't she? <laughs> the victim, she, she ran away, but you gave chase. Finally, there was a terrible impaction. Then it was all over. Hmm. If things occurred as you had testified, then I'm afraid the defendant is guilty. Very well, defendant. Uh, I mean, Mr. Wright. But the Nyan Cat woman <laughs> said that there was a small girl. Yes, she did, exactly. Your cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. What we got here? No, it's literally just that. Oh. Hello, calm down, chill out. Thank you for joining. Red and blue is his tie color. Red and blue makes purple, which is his hair color. Red and white makes pink, which is his suit color. He has blue eyes. Damn, they really went like all out for this guy, huh? That explains the awful tie. <laughs> which is just, yeesh. Mm. Hold on. Um. Can I swing over to give chase? Can you be a little more detailed about that? I think it's worth knowing exactly what happened. Of course, comprende. I understand. The victim was attacked by you and ran to the left. You gave chase and struck her down. Are you sure? As you know, I am always absolutely perfect. Perhaps you sh could change your testimony to reflect this new detail. Contradictions in young cats. <laughs> 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 a 
objection. Wait right there. Mr. White, you've dug your own grave. What is this? You said the victim ran to the left. But that directly contradicts Miss May's testimony. She clearly stated that the victim ran right. Oh, it's simple. You have misheard her. I think not. Look at the floor plans. The killer was here. And the victim here. The victim ran to the left as you claim she did. She would have been running directly away from the door. She would have been running into a dead end. Don't you find that odd? Very strange. I did see her run to the left. I did. Phoenix, look at his face. I don't think he's lying about this one. True. Maybe he really did see the victim run left. So he did witness the killing? Wait a second. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Miss May says right and Mr. White says left. Can you please explain this contradiction to the court? Both are right. Both, both witnesses are telling the truth for once. Huh. I doubt it. Uh, rather, that is not clear of the contradiction. There is one scenario, though, that would explain their confliction, conflicting accounts. God, why can't I speak? What? Obviously, the witness was not viewing the crime from the hotel. Mr. Wright, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean? He was not viewing the crime from the hotel. If he was not in the hotel, where could he have been? In the law offices of Faye and Co, of course. More specifically, he was standing here. Time to show the court where Mr. White was standing. We. This is where he was. Look. When the victim ran for the door. If he was watching from this point, to him it would appear that she ran to the left. Please. This is no time for jokes and ill taste. That is where the killer was standing. Sir, you can't be that slow, seriously. Order! I will have order! Anyone disturbing the order of this courtroom will be held in contempt. Mr. Wright, what are you suggesting? Rapscallion! The postulations of the defense are in distortion of the truth, Your Honor. Indeed, they do seem a bit far-fetched. <laughs> you provide us with so much entertainment, Mr. Lawyer. Now he's laughing. The hilarity of the moment made me remember something. It appears I have been unclear, and for this I apologize. Mr. Your Honor, might I be allowed to testify once more? Very well, let's hear your revised testimony. Good luck, you can't fix a broken testimony, buddy. Miss May's testimony was correct, as was mine. When you assaulted the girl, she first ran to the left, and then you hit her, savagely. That is what I saw. Next, with the last of her strength, she ran to the right. You chased her and delivered the final blow. That is what Miss May saw. You see? You hit her twice. Don't you remember, Mr. Lawyer? Hmm. That does seem to make sense. Will you be cross-examining the witness's testimony? You bet I will. I mean, yes, Your Honor. <sighs> okay, hold on. Uh... Yes, okay, it says a blow, but like, is it just one blow? Like, how many times was she hit? Does it say anywhere? It doesn't specify that though. It says like, she died from a blow. I mean, I can try anyways. Mm. Uh, 
with the note? Uh, no, I don't think it would. Should I try the autopsy report or Oopsie. All right. Objection. Nope. Fuck. <laughs> this evidence clearly reveals. Yeah, we get it. Mm, no. Maybe this one. I'm gonna try again. Objection. That's it. Okay, cool. So I was on the right track. Mr. White. The victim died from a single blow. It doesn't specify that I just said it said died from a blow. Usually like it says like if she was hit just once. She was hit once. <sighs> from a single blow. What do you have to say to that? Uh, <clears throat> That's my chance to hit him where it counts. Mr. White, wasn't it you who told this court you were absolutely perfect? Hmm. I will refrain from using this phrase from now on. Your Honor, if you could ask the witness for a new testimony. The witness is obviously confused, Your Honor. I would like to request a ten minute break. Oh my god, you pussy. Mm, yes, yes, quite. The witness is confused because he's lying. I am emphatically request that there be no break, Your Honor. Yeah, we want justice. Don't let him get away. We want justice. You're gonna have to wait. One, two, three, four, five more games. <laughs> uh -huh. Very well. If the witness would care to revise his testimony. The crowd's on my side, and they're slipping out of this now, White. Mr. White. Oh, okay. Um, well, see, I looked at the other window when I heard that thing fall. Then, the next moment, I saw Miss Mia run to the left. The killer, you, attacked her, but she dodged. Um, and then, uh, she turned and ran for the door. Then you did her in with a single blow. Flop! Hmm. Flop indeed. Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. Mr. Your Honor, my stomach, you see, it's hurting. Deal with it. This is almost over. Alright, uh... And I heard that thing fall. You heard that thing fall? What exactly was that thing? Huh? Oh, oh, that, um, the glass light stand. Right, the one that had fallen over at the scene. Phoenix, doesn't something about that strike you as odd? Yeah, very odd. Yeah, that is odd. I'll press further. Mr. White. Light stand, yes. 
Huh? What? You're saying you saw the light glass light stand? Yes. Then change your testimony to reflect that. Sorry, my bad. The witness will revise his testimony. Okay, okay, of course. A light stand was lying on the floor when I looked? The glass stand was lying on the floor. That's the first I've heard of this. Why didn't you tell us about the stand before? Why? Me? Well, I was instructed not to- Wait! One moment! Give me a moment to gather my thoughts! I'm so, so confused. Why it's falling apart. God, shut up! Your Honor, please, I ask that you do not allow the witness to be badgered any further. M Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Edgeworth is on the ropes. Very well, the witness may continue his account. Can I show the floor plans? I can. <laughs> Mr. White. It was impossible for you to have seen the glass stand. <laughs> Mr. Judge, please refrain from getting blackmailed by this colorful man. What? Look at this. These are the floor plans to the scene of the murder, yes? Correct, Your Honor. Now, look. If you were to look through the window at the office, this is the area you, you would be able to see. Here. Well, note that the stand is not within the visible area. Well, Mr. Wright, White, I mean. What do you have to say to that? Uh, uh, ridiculousity, Mr. White. If you were in the Gatewater Hotel as you claim, could not have seen this stand before it fell over. In fact, you wouldn't have been able to see it after it fell either. There's no way you could have recognized the broken shards on, as a like, gla glass light stand. So when did you see the stand, Mr. White? It must have been the moment that it fell. And the only place you could have seen that from is inside the Fay Law offices. In other words, you were at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Mr. White? Mr. White. You did it, didn't you? Mr. Your Honor. I... I... Miss Mia. <laughs> Looks like we're about to get our verdict. God, Edgeworth, please! That's far enough, Phoenix Wright. What? Oh, I forgot about Edgeworth. Mr. White. I think the time has come. Shouldn't you confess your crime now, huh? What? I said you should confess your crime. Ergo. Confess that you placed the wiretap. The wiretap? Order! Order! Mr. Edgeworth, explain to the court what you mean by this. Distinguished members of the court. Mr. White is slightly confused. Allow me to explain. I really don't like the way this is headed. As you know, Mr. White is the CEO of Blue Corp. He ordered his secretary, Miss April May, to tap the law offices of Miss Fay. What does that have to do, Your Honor? The question is, when was the wiretap placed in the office and by whom? No, you wouldn't. Mr. White, in order to place the wiretap, you entered Miss Fay's office. Am I correct? Correct. You are most correct, Miles. Give me a break. Yes, in order to place the wiretap, I breached the Fay and Cole law offices. 
That is when I saw that accursed light stand. Now I'm confused. Please explain to the court what all this means, Mr. Edward. Gladly, Your Honor. Mr. Phoenix Wright has made his position quite clear. He has determined that Mr. White knew the glass stand was in the office. He has shown that there was only one time Mr. White could have seen the stand at the very moment of the murder. Thus, Mr. Wright would like you to believe that Mr. White was the murderer. I see. However, it is a fact that Mr. White had been to the office well before the murder took place, when he went to place the wiretap. He could have seen the glass light stand then. Ergo, Mr. Phoenix Wright's theory is revealed for the basis conjecture it is. Mr. White, you will testify to the court about this wiretapping. <laughs> Leave it to me. I I feel faint. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Fay and Cole law offices. Of course, I had done so to place the wiretap. That is when I saw this glass light stand. Hmm. So you saw the stand before the night of the incident. And this is how you were able to identify what had fallen over, by the sound? Correct, that is right. I see you very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine. Oh, what am I supposed to do now? Good luck, Phoenix. Alright, beginning of September, the week before the murder. Uh, why did you notice something as innocuous as a light stand? The light stand was made entirely out of glass. It was quite stylish, so I guess it made a lasting impression on me. Such a butacious thing. Deserves attention, does it not? That is all. Damn it. There's nothing there for me to press him on. Oh well, maybe he's rattled enough that I can bluff something out of him. Oh. Damn, I'm so used to like the ladder games where you can like examine the evidence <laughs> yourself. Hmm. Interesting. <sighs> An apartment store receipt with letters written in blood on the back. A receipt for what though? Why did you tap me as phone? This has no bearing on the current case, Your Honor. Lucorp is a detective agency of sorts. We have a result that we have a responsibility to protect client confidentiality. Should I try? I mean, I, I, I do know what I'm looking out for, but like, I'm just like, nope, not that. It's very easy to tell because the music continues playing and uh, also uh, the thing, what's what's it called? Like the, the penalty meter up there, it doesn't go away. So that's like a given that you're on the wrong track. Okay, whatever, I don't care. <sighs> Objection overruled. All right. D do you have proof? Oh my God, shut up. Miss May April May knew the details of Miss Faye's phone conversation. This proves that the wiretap was placed before the murder. Huh, all right. Was it really you that went into the office? Or was it Miss May? 
Unidentified fingerprints, several days old, were found in the Fay and Cole law offices. Those were obviously Mr. White's. And if I know Edgeworth, he's already run a check on those prints. Now, Mr. White, tell us why you went to Fay and Cole law offices. Oh, okay, so you just have to run out of stuff again. Uh oh, don't tell me I've run out of ammo. I'm afraid that's as far as you go, Mr. Wright. The time has come for you to admit your defeat. You fought honorably. No more. I can't take this anymore. Mr. Wright, are you giving up? Yes, Your Honor. Phoenix. Phoenix, over here. I know that voice. M Mia? Never gave up, Phoenix. M Mia! Where... Where am I? The waiting lobby? What happened? Oh, right. I lost the trial. I was hallucinating. Ah, oh, you're finally awake. <laughs> hey, Phoenix. Yeah, that's no way to greet an old friend. Phoenix, I want you to look at me. Your Maya? Didn't you know the Fae women have strong psychic powers? When you accepted accepted your defeat in court, it appears that was enough of a shock to awaken Maya's true powers. So Maya is channeling you, Mia. That's right. I am Maya, but I am also Mia. Now I want you to listen to me, Phoenix. Maya never gave up, and you can't either. That's why I came here to tell you what I came here to tell you. But we don't have much time, Phoenix. Now listen. You've already won. Huh? You have that receipt in the court record, right? Um. Oh, yeah, the one you wrote my on? Phoenix. White wrote that, not me. So, what do I do with it? Look at the front of the receipt. The front? It's a regular receipt. Looks like it's from a famous department store. Thousand dollars. Wow, big spender. Item glass light stand. Date of purchase September 4th. September 4th? That's right, Phoenix. I bought that stand the day before I was killed. Whoa! Now, what did Mr. White say in his testimony? It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I mean, technically. Fourth is the beginning of September. <laughs> I mean, technically, <laughs> it is at the beginning. <laughs> he said he saw the stand the week before the murder. That is not a puzzle. <laughs> there you go. I think the court is about to reconvene. Go do it, Phoenix. You know you're innocent. Now you just have to prove it. Right. Yes. Yeah, but not a week before the murder. Yeah, exactly. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Mr. Felix Wright. It's the defendant. Rather, are you all right, Mr. Wright? Yes, sorry, Your Honor. I'm fine now. Then let's start where we left off. Your Honor, there is nothing to go back to. The cross-examination of Mr. White is finished. All that is required now is for you to pass judgment on the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Your Honor. Please, give me one more chance. I promise you, this is the last time I'll ask you. Hmm. But as Mr. Edgeworth has noted, the trial is more or less finished. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have an opinion on this matter? I say, let us give Mr. Phoenix Wright his last chance. Very well. 
You may begin your cross-examination. It was the beginning of September, the week before the murder. I had entered the Fanco offices. Of course I had done so, whatever. It's when I saw this glass light stand, but did you though? Objection! Objection! Look closely at this. See the word Maya written in blood? <laughs> You're grasping. I think not. Look at the other side of the receipt. The other side? Your Honor. Would you tell the court what is written on the other side of that receipt? Hmm. Well, a glass light stand. And the date of purchase? Why, that's the day before the murder. You see? Mr. White, when you allegedly entered Faye and Cole law offices at the beginning of September, even though the 4th is technically the beginning of the September, the stand could not have been there. Oh, man, is screaming. Well, Mr. White, can't get out of this one, can you? No, it's impossible. Uh-oh, he's losing it. Well, Your Honor, I understand there must be quite a bit of pressure on you. But I think you'll agree you can't judge me guilty under these circumstances. Very well. Then that is all for the trial of... Objection! I was waiting for it. By the way, if you like hit that little like follow button, um, uh, I have fixed some... Uh, what are they called? Uh, alerts. <laughs> Not so fast, Phoenix Wright. Eh? Yeah. What? No way he can worm his way out of this one. Oh wait, I forgot. It's Edgeworth. There is a certain thread of logic to the defendant's claims. However, there is no concrete proof that Phoenix Wright is innocent. Ergo, I would like to request one more day before Phoenix Wright is granted his freedom. I need time to make one more inquiry into this matter. My god, are we still not done? <laughs> Ah, uh, well, actually, it does make sense because I was thinking like five hours for the first one, so it does add up. Another inquiry? This isn't going to be another one of those updated auto autopsy reports. This guy just makes up evidence as he pleases. This is bad. A subject! Mr. White's guilt is obvious. There is no need to prolong this trial any further. Hmm, well, Mr. Edgeworth? If anyone is going to call Mr. White to trial, it would be me, the prosecution. I need a day to ascertain whether these new claims have any basis in factual evidence. Hmm. I see. Objection denied. What? God damn it. The completion of the trial of Mr. Phoenix Wright will be postponed until tomorrow. Fuck. No, there's no telling what will happen if I can't if I can't end this now. Edgeworth is sure to come up with or just make up something. And after Mia showed up to help me and all. Mr. Your Honor, may I go home? Of course. Thank you for your time. <laughs> the witness will stay. Mia! Phoenix. Read this note out loud. Mia? What's this? Alright, cool. Your Honor, if I may. He hurts my fucking eyes. <laughs> You're not the only one. You're quite persistent today, Mr. Wright. You bet I am. My life is riding on this one. I have something I would like to read to the court. The memo Mia had given me was a list of names. Many of them sounded strangely familiar. People in finance, finance, famous celebrities. That's when it happened. Stop, desist, halt. Please stop, make him stop. How, how did you get that list? Mr. White, 
Admit your guilt right here, right now. Or else this list will be released to the press. I... I confess. I confess. I... I did it. I hit her. I hit Miss Mia with... The thinker. Case closed, Your Honor. <laughs> well, I see no reason to continue this trial. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You've done it again! That was quite a spirited defense! Yes, Your Honor, I guess you could say that. If only you knew how spirited it was. Hmm... I'm cursed for thinking this, but Mr. White looks like- LOOKS THICK FROM BEHIND! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hmm, well... This court finds the defense- Ahem. <clears throat> rather, the defendant, Mr. Phoenix writes. Not... GUILTY! YES! <laughs> the confetti is a nice touch, I love that. Yay! That is all. This court is adjourned. Thank you. September 9th, 2.24. In the defendant lobby, number one. Well, I never thought I'd be saying this again. But congratulations. You're lucky I was born a fae. I'm lucky I had both you and Maya on my side. I'm glad you made it. Thank you, Phoenix. You risked a lot to help me and Maya. I won't forget it as long as I live. As long as you live? My time here is running out. Huh? Maya's powers are still weak. I can't stay here that long. What? No, there's still so much to say. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll meet again. Chief! <laughs> I'm not the chief anymore. Phoenix? Can you come to the office tonight? Say, nine? The office? See you later. Chief. Mia. <laughs> ah, damn, he is two minutes late. Cannot believe this. Being here, it's hard not to think about that night. You came. Mia. I was kind of worried you might not. Oh, of course I came. Well then. I'm pretty hungry. How about a burger? M Mia? <laughs> you should see your face. Mia! What are you talking about? It's me, Maya. M Maya? What? Did I look like my sister? L look like you were her. Hmm. I might be able to use that. Oh, Phoenix, go to the store and buy me lunch, would you? Um, Maya, why are you here? Because of this. See? Mia wrote me a letter. Take care of Phoenix for me. Take care of... Huh? She means the office. This office. Someone has to help with the new Wright and Cole offices, right? And who better but me, Maya Faye, reporting for duty. Wait, no. On second thought, let's make this casual. Yo, Nick. Maya here, ready to get down to business, to defeat the Huns. You don't mind calling me... You don't mind me calling you Nick, do you? It's a great name, Mia said that's what your friend Larry calls you. Nick? You know what this means? We're partners! You know, when I think about it, it is Maya's fault I'm here now. But if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Write and call law offices. It's got a good ring to it. Yeah. Because Phoenix Nick. It's it's kind of far fetched, but it, yeah, exactly Nix. <laughs> Thanks, Maya. Oh, that's cute. That's very cute. Good luck, Phoenix. Like Dick from Richard. Yeah. Pretty much. I'll always be here, watching. <laughs> no, we understood what you meant. You're, you're, <laughs> you're fine. Right. Okay, Nick. Let's do it. Huh? Do what? Burgers, dummy. Burgers. 
There's a great burger joint just down the street. It's so funny. Because I'm pretty sure that in uh, the original Japanese version, uh, they go out for ramen. <laughs> but, the, but the localization team just put it down as burgers for some reason. I don't know why. There's like this whole meme of like them eating um, Japanese food. And they're like, eat your burgers. <laughs> uh, there's a great burger joint just down the street. Come on, time's away wasting. Okay, wait up. The end, hell yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, that's a fun one. Let me just save. Okay. Oops. <laughs> huh. So that was a lot of fun. I feel like my my voice is just gonna go out at like any second right now. <laughs> These Americans cannot relate to the, to this exotic food dish called ramen. Yeah, exactly. Hold on, wait. I gotta I gotta find that meme. Um, uh, eat your hamburgers, Apollo. <laughs> oh yes, I love that so much. It's so good. Found it. Uh, let me just. Can I? Sure, I'll do that. It's fine. All right. Uh. No, god damn it, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to close this. No? Okay, cool, whatever. There we go. Uh, and then we insert image here. This one. Oh, it's so funny. I love it so much. Um, hold on, wait, let me just uh, get it bigger so I can actually see what's going on. Put it on my other monitor over here. Alright. Ah, Los Angeles, truly the greatest city in these United States of America. I, for one, am proud to live in a country with a rich, uh, as rich a history and culture as ours. Something about this seems... Off. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Apollo. Now come and let's all enjoy a traditional American meal around the traditional American kotatsu. Eat your hamburgers, Apollo. <laughs> I love it so much. It's so good. It's such a good meme. Oh, damn, the chat box disappeared. I don't know why. Oops. It should still be there. Oh well. It's whatever, I guess. <laughs> there it is. I love how Phoenix gets more and more Japanese as the comic progresses. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so funny because I recently started replaying uh, the fourth game in like the, the main series because I finally finished playing uh, the second Investigations game, <laughs> which I spent like over a year on. And, uh, yeah, they really just, they said, we can't do this anymore. We got it. We got to make the, the ramen, the ramen, because this is like actually like relevant to a case. <laughs> we can't make it into a burger joint. <laughs> uh, oh my God. So yeah, I think that's uh that's kind of fun. Oh, hold on, wait, I gotta um I forgot to turn on the music. Oh my god. God, this song is such a vibe. I like put it on earlier and just like listen to it on repeat for like hours on end, it feels like.
So, yeah, I hope you... Uh, the poor kids, how will they understand if they aren't any burgers? It's even funnier in the anime because they're literally there, like, eating ramen. And and in my eyes, they're like, oh, I like these burgers. These burgers taste great or something. And it's just like... <laughs> the localization team. It's, it's really hilarious. <sighs> but, yeah, I, um... Hope you had fun. I don't know when I'm gonna do the next episode. Um, Cause uh, I won't really be doing this like as often and on a schedule at all. I'm mostly gonna be like following uh, the... the other channel's schedule. Like, can, can we point down? No, we cannot. Yes, we can. Like, there. Like, that schedule, that's usually what I stick to. I just... I've been working so hard on all this. You know? Like, I couldn't sleep the other night, so I literally sat up and just worked on this. Tried to get, like... <laughs> you can see the sunglasses behind me. <laughs> oh my god, that reminds me. I forgot to turn on the lights. You know what? Whatever. It's fine. Um... I knew I forgot something. Here we go. <laughs> Finally. Oh. <laughs> no, but I just thought you died. Nope, it's still here apparently. Unfortunately. <laughs> It was like way too annoying until there just wasn't enough of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you find, found it really cozy. I had a great time too. I'm still like trying to get used to like actually like um, attempting to voice act more. Um, I'm doing a meh, okay job at it, I guess. I don't feel like I'm very confident in it. At least not yet. There are some I'm more confident in. Um, and yeah. I'm really excited uh, for the next episode. Where I will only be doing one episode. <laughs> because they're just so long. I don't remember exactly how long. I believe it lasts for about as long as this. I like found a whole like fucking thing. What's it called? Like um, a sheet for it that said like how long each case was in minutes. But I'm like, I don't know in minutes. What the fuck does 222 minutes mean? <laughs> I'm not very smart. On like a spreadsheet that's what it's called so samurai that lasts for about 222 minutes <laughs> yeah i need to give my voice some time off for sure um yeah i don't know this has been really nice and uh i'm so glad i get to play ace attorney now like yes Oh, Fleur, you followed too. Thank you so much, by the way. Also, thank you, Thingy. I saw you followed earlier. Before the stream even started. <laughs> but also, let me just, like, um, go into... Okay, this is not gonna look really good. Okay, let me just turn this on. Um... So, <laughs> what I did, I did something really funny, and I'm really, like, proud of that. I'm just gonna replay uh, your follows, because I find it so funny. So, here is uh, Bengi's follow. Eh? Eh? I, th I, think that's, I think that's really cool. But not only that... 
There are different ones. It varies. And I'm like so proud of that. <laughs> and uh, for like, um, uh, what's it called? Um, you love that? I love that you love that. Uh, for like donations and stuff for those who want to donate. I haven't even made a fucking donation link. I have to do that. <laughs> Uh, for those, it, it has the witness testimony thing, which I think is kind of funny. And then there is like a text to speech. <laughs> I'll have to work on that a bit for next time. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you have like any like uh, feedback about like the layout that I'm currently using, like if you thought that my face cam was like too small during the gameplay or whatever, uh, please do let me know because that's important. <laughs> it's important that I fix it, but I was like, I don't know where to put my face cam. But I feel like the way it is right now, it's um, pretty good, at least in my opinion. Um, because it's like, not in the way of anything, you know? I, I just don't know if it's like a bit small. Anyways, before I ramble on way too much, thank you so much for dropping by and just hanging here with me. I'll certainly let you know uh, the next time uh, I will have another Ace Attorney stream. So, until next time, like I said, you can catch me on Lazy Lily and Gamer Mom, where I sometimes stream with my sister. So, I'm currently playing Okamiden on there, so if you want to, like, come watch that sometimes, then go ahead. And we also played, like, just some random games whenever. Uh, we stream on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and... Fridays <laughs> and I dropped the stream there tonight for this but whatever I'm, I keep rambling <laughs> thank you so much for dropping by I really appreciate that so yeah bye guys bye <laughs>